In part A, we have to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now, what we have done is we've come down and made a set of figures. In figure one, we have the original circuit. And what we're going to do is first combine these two resistors, but we have to decide if those are in series or are they in parallel. And the best way to do that is to just move from one resistor to the other and see if you encounter a junction. So for example, if you move from the six ohm resistor over to the nine ohm resistor, you would encounter a junction right here. Even if you traveled in the other direction, if you went this way to get to the nine ohm resistor, you would encounter a junction on that pathway as well. So because there is a junction, then these two are definitely in parallel. So we'll just label them accordingly. Now for parallel resistors, you probably have learned that to combine them, you do one over the equivalent resistance and that would equal one over the six ohm resistance plus one over the nine ohm resistance. If you add the one sixth and the one ninth on your calculator, let's see what you get. You're gonna get five eighteenths. And then what I like to do is I like to invert both sides of this equation. So if you invert the left side, you would just get REQ. And then on the right side, you would get 18 divided by five, which is 3.6 ohms. So those two combined in parallel become 3.6 ohms, and that we have redrawn over here. So you hopefully notice that the two in parallel have combined to make a 3.6 ohm resistor on the right-hand side of the figure there. Next, we move from figure two down to figure three. And that, in that case, we're gonna be combining, let's see, these two resistors right here. Now these are in series. Series is much easier because all you need to do to find the equivalent resistance is just add this resistance value to this resistance value. So if you add those two together, you're going to get six ohms. And that is where this resistor right here is coming from. So those two combine to form that resistor right there. Next, we move from figure three to figure four. We're going to combine the two six ohm resistors in parallel. You'll notice those are indeed in parallel because if you travel from this resistor to the other one, you would encounter a junction either there or right there. So those are indeed in parallel. So we have to use the trickier parallel equation. We have one over the equivalent resistance equals one over six ohms plus one over six ohms. We now have one over REQ equals two over six, which is one third. If you flip both sides around here, you would see that the equivalent resistance is three ohms. So those two will combine to form that three ohm resistor right there. And then finally, if we go from figure four to figure five, we can see that all three of these are in series. There is no junction between them. So again, we just add those together. So if we add six, three and nine ohms, we're gonna get 15 ohms right there. So we have accomplished part A. Remember, we needed the overall equivalent resistance and we can see that that is indeed 15 ohms. The next thing we need to figure out is probably the current through each resistor in the circuit. That is true. So for current, it's a lot trickier. What we're gonna do is go to figure five and you're going to apply Ohm's law. We know that the potential difference equals the current times the resistance. In this case, the potential difference is 15 volts and the equivalent resistance is 15 ohms. If you divide both sides by 15 ohms, you can clear, clearly see that the current is just one amp. So that means that this current right here is one amp. Now what we're gonna do is move our way backwards all the way back to figure one. And as we do so, we're going to be making some calculations. Now, let's go from this resistor backwards to the three resistors that it came from. Remember that those three were in series. One rule you must follow when moving backwards through a circuit is if you move backwards to a series arrangement, then you have to bring with you the current. And so that means that this resistor has one amp worth of current, so does this one, and so does this one. What you would then wanna do is calculate the potential difference. Remember, delta V equals I times R. So if you multiply the current and the resistance, you're going to get the number of volts at each resistor. So for example, one times six, that would be six volts. This would be three volts. And then this would also be six volts. Okay, back to figure three now. You're gonna be moving backwards from this resistor to these two. Now, those two are in parallel. When moving backwards to parallel, don't bring the current, bring instead the volts. So that means that this resistor is three volts and this resistor also has three volts. We need the current on both of those resistors. 
So the current, according to Ohm's law, would be the delta V divided by R. So all you do is take the volts and divide it by the resistance. Three volts divided by six ohms is half of an amp. And then the same thing over here. Three volts divided by six ohms is half of an amp. Now, for these other resistors, you keep the same values. This was one amp. This was six volts. Over here was six volts and one amp. It does get a little cluttered with all these numbers, but it is important to carry them with you as you move backwards. Now we're gonna move backwards from, let's see, from this resistor back to these two. Those two were in series. So you'll recall from earlier, you bring with you the current. So take that half of an amp and bring it with you to these two. So this is half of an amp, this is half of an amp. Let's get the volts by multiplying the current and the resistance. So half of an amp times 3.6 ohms is 1.8 volts, and then half of an amp times 2.4 ohms is 1.2 volts. These other three resistors, we already have all the values. So recall that this was half of an amp and three volts. Over here, it was six volts and one amp. And then up here, it was six volts and one amp. Finally, back to figure one. We are going backwards from this resistor to those two. Those two, of course, were in parallel, so you're going to bring with you the volts. So those 1.8 volts are gonna come back, and you're gonna put that here, 1.8 volts, and here, 1.8 volts. To get the current, you divide the volts by the resistance, so 1.8 divided by nine, this is 0.2 amps, and then 1.8 divided by six is 0.3 amps. Like I said, it gets a little cluttered, but good bookkeeping is necessary. For the other resistors, just copy and paste all the values you have found from earlier. So we'll just finish that off. And now the rest of the problem is gonna be a lot easier now that we've accomplished all this work. So we want the current. So we can see from the original figure one here that I1 is just going to be one amp. So that would be the correct answer for I1. Where is, let's see, I2, there it is. I2 is going to be half of an amp. So that's the correct answer for I2. I3 is going to be half of an amp as well. I4 is going to be 0.3 amps. I'm running out of colors here. I5, where are you, I5? Oh, it's right there. I5, if we follow that along through this resistor right here, that's gonna be 0.2 amps. And that's it, we have all five currents highlighted. So that completes part B of the question. Part C wants the potential difference, but we've done that already. So if you look very carefully, we, we can see what those will be. So for example, the potential difference between points A and C would just be the volts between points A and C. So that resistor had a volts of six volts. So that's done. For the potential difference between points C and D, if you look carefully, that had volts value of three volts. Then between points C and E, the volts there was 1.2 volts. The potential difference between points E and D. Well, that just was that one resistor and the diagonal, and that was 1.8 volts. The potential difference between points F and D was 1.8 volts. And then finally, the potential difference between points D and B was also six volts. So we'll put that up here. Okay, so that completes part C. And finally, to part D, the power dissipated by each resistor. We know that power can be calculated by the potential difference squared divided by the resistance. So for example, if we wanted the power dissipated between points A and C, we would take the potential difference between those two points, which was six volts, we would square it, and then we would divide by the resistance value between those two points. Now between points A and C, the resistance was six ohms. So if we work that out, we're gonna get six watts. And then we can do the potential difference between points E and D, or the power between points E and D, excuse me. The power between points E and D is the 1.8 volts squared, and then look for the resistance between those two points. Now here's E and there's D. The resistance was six ohms. So if you work that out, you gotta do 1.8 squared 
into six and you get 0.54 watts. So let's see here, we've done A to C, so that one's done. We've done E to D, so that one's done. Let's do C to D. So the power from C to D is just three volts squared. And then the resistance between points C and D was six ohms. So three squared into six is 1.5 watts. So between C and D is done. Need a couple more here. Let's do the power dissipated between points D and B. We take the six volts, we square it, and then look between points D and B and you have a six ohm resistor. So that's gonna be six watts. That takes care of D to B. Let's go between C and E next. Running out of room again here. So power between C and E is 1.2 volts. We'll square it, then look at points C to E and we have a 2.4 ohm resistor. So 1.2 squared into 2.4 is 0.6 watts. And finally, we can do F to D. We'll take the 1.8 volts, we'll square it, and between F and D was a nine ohm resistor. So 1.8 squared into nine is 0.36 watts. And that completes all the powers and the answers to these questions.